Allah the Almighty, the Exalted, the Glorified, has said, Every soul shall taste death, and you will all be paid your full wages on the day of resurrection. So he who is distanced from the fire and admitted into the garden has indeed triumphed, and the life of this world is only the enjoyment of delusion. <coughs> Respected brothers and sisters, one of the indisputable facts that requires no debate is that man fears nothing more in this life than death. Many people hate the word death, perhaps because it is mysterious to us, or because we associate death with the grave, and we associate the grave with darkness, solitude, narrowness and constriction, <clears throat> or perhaps because we love life, regardless of how that life is, or perhaps because we love our children, our family and our friends. Many people view death as the final separation between them and their loved ones, after which there is no reunion. But belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the pillar, is the first pillar of our creed, our aqidah. However, this creed is incomplete until faith in another pillar complements it, and that is belief in the hereafter, in a day of resurrection, that after spending this stage of our life in this world, we shall pass away and then be resurrected to live an eternal life. The details of death and the abode of the deceased must be understood first by remembering one fact, and that is human, Im human immortality is something impossible. Death is the fate of all those who preceded us and all those who will follow us. And if anyone were to have been spared this fate, it would have been the master of mankind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said to him definitively, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Indeed you are to die, and indeed they are to die. Meaning you, O Muhammad, will certainly meet this fate, and so too will everyone else. Despite my love for you, you, like all those before you, will die and nobody will experience immortality in this life. He said, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِّن قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدِ And we did not grant any man before you immortality. أَفَإِن مِّتَّ فَهُمُ الْخَالِدُونَ So if you die, would they be eternal? كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul shall taste death. وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةِ وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ And we test and we test you with evil and with good as a trial, and to us you will return. In contrast, thinking that man, when he dies, everything comes to an end, and that he feels nothing, and that he goes from a state of existence into a state of absence and non-existence, is an erroneous delusion. A delusion propagated by materialists and by atheists. It is necessary to know that death is but a transition from one abode to another. A transition from a mortal life to an eternal one. And that the notion that death is the end after which there is only absence of man is a major mistake that nobody can accept. No intelligent person can accept. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala describes dying in the Qur'an 14 times as tawaffahu, from wafah. And wafah is to return the trust, to return the belonging in full, meaning that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he, he will not cause us to perish or disappear with death. Rather, he takes his possession back without increase or decrease. And he will entrust the souls with his <coughs> appointed, in the hands of his appointed workers, the angels. 
But death is falsely presented as a shift from this life of vivid senses, of movement, of feelings and emotion, to a phase that is devoid of everything, as that is normally presented. That after we die, there is nothing. No. The perception of death as a stage of experiencing nothingness is, a, is seriously incorrect and erroneous. And the Quran debunks this concept quite profoundly that the afterlife, the akhirah, is the true life, my dear respected brothers and, and sisters. He says, وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوٌ وَلَعِبٌ And this worldly life is not but di diversion and amusement. That's the nature of this life. Diversion, to be distracted and amused and entertained. وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ And indeed, the home of the hereafter, لَهِيَ That is الحيوان, that is the life, the life. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If only they knew. الحيوان, which is a masdar, it's the root, it indicates and denotes power and emphasis, meaning that the life, the life that man experiences after death, with it, his senses are heightened, they don't disappear. With it, his intelligence is raised. With it, his consciousness becomes complete. With it, his perceptions are sharpened. With death, his awareness is amplified compared to though compared to the life of this world no when we die we wake up as ali radiyallahu an he said he said radiyallahu an an nas niyamun people are asleep the reality is is that we are asleep in this life fa idha matu tabahu and if they die they become alert they become conscious wa idha man tabahu nadimu and if they do not become alert to this fact in their life, if they are not alert, they will regret. They will regret after death the fact that they did not wake up from the delusion that they were experiencing in this life. And regret and sorrow does not, uh, 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 do not benefit after death. We must realize, my dear respected brothers and sisters, some aspects of human existence and that is that our existence is in phases phases where the primary phase in the primary phase we know nothing about the secondary phase we know nothing about the experience and the nature of the secondary phase and what is beyond it such as the phases and the stages of human life a child cannot understand adulthood can never understand the nature of adulthood. He cannot perceive it. He cannot fathom it. He cannot comprehend it. If you present to him concepts of adulthood, business, trade, or sexuality, the child will be dumbfounded because he has nothing to do with these matters. And he cannot process that information. And accordingly, in this phase of our life, we do not know enough about what is after death. We have not experienced, we have not seen it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed to mankind what they can comprehend, what they can understand about death and what follows it. And first of all, the first thing that He revealed to us, that this life is temporary and is bound to come to an end. Its duration, our lifespan, the duration of our lifespan is finite and predetermined. Just as our rizq, our provision and sustenance, sustenance were predetermined in the wombs of our mothers. In the wombs of our mothers, our life was recorded and so too was our provision. And nobody knows how long they will live. No soul knows what it shall earn tomorrow, and no soul knows in which land it shall die. And Allah, the exalted and the glorified, He revealed to us also that we have no power to extend or to shorten our lives. We have no power over that in reality. 
So he says, Subhana, فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ So when their specified time arrives, meaning death, they cannot delay it for a single hour, nor can they bring it forward. Then we lead another life in the hereafter, the fruits of which are planted in this world. Therefore, Allah commanded us not to be distracted or diverted from preparing for our eternal home. So he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ O you who believe, do not let your wealth or children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. And whoever does so, they are indeed of the losers. وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ and give from what you, we have provided for you before death comes to one of you. And he says, Oh Lord, if only you would give me some more time so that I can give charity and be one of the righteous. But never will Allah delay a soul when its time has come. And Allah is acquainted with what you do. <clears throat> Very often, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we forget these facts. We leave ourselves to be immersed in the pleasures of this life and its allurements. The pursuit of our worldly share takes precedent over our share in the hereafter. Competition for material possessions preoccupies us from competing in righteous deeds. Our focus is directed on the temporary and we are diverted from the eternal. Our hearts harden and rust. We cry at the loss of profits at work. Yet we do not cry or weep if we miss a salah, if we miss a prayer. This hard and impenetrable heart can only be remedied by the remembrance of the great leveler, the destroyer of pleasures, Death. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we are surrounded by death. It is all around us. But we have tunnel vision where we cancel out and block out the peripheral vision. We do not wish to look at the sick, we look at the healthy. We do not, we do not wish to look even at the poor, we look at the rich. We do not wish to look at the, those who, ex, who are experiencing uh, misfortune, let us look at the fortunes of the wealthy. But we should in fact look at the sick. We should visit them and the dying and visit the graves. Let us visit the graves voluntarily where we can go for a short while and leave when we will. Before we are taken to the graves involuntarily and we cannot return. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, visit the graves for indeed they remind you of the hereafter. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu reports that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كُنْتُ نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ زِيَارَةِ الْقُبُورِ فَزُورُوهَا فَإِنَّهَا تُزَهِّدُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَتُذَكِّرُ الْآخِرَةِ I had prohibited you from visiting the graves, but visit them now. Indeed, they will weaken your attachment to the world and remind you of the hereafter. Any grave, Muslim or non-Muslim, believer or non-believer, relative or a stranger, any grave. Visiting the graves is not to venerate the dead. It is not to beautify their, a tomb or to beautify a headstone that the dead does not benefit from. It is not to adorn it with flowers or to make chants or to seek and derive blessing from the deceased for the deceased cannot benefit himself. Only his actions can benefit him now in his grave. And what you gift to your relative of sadaqah, for example. So visit the graves, my dear respected brothers and sisters, so that we may remember death. So that we may remember that no wealth or strength can prevent the inevitable. Let, it not, let not the thought of death be a passing thought. Let it be a constant. 
by which we govern all of our reflections, by which we govern all of our daily decisions, by remembering death, so that we discipline ourselves. We are conscious that we are to leave this world and we will part with the family and part with our wealth and meet our Lord only with our deeds. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't command us to remember death uh, uh, every so often. He said, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذِمِ الْلَذَّاتِ Frequently remember, abundantly remember the destroyer of pleasures by which he meant death. That is the practice of the intelligent. <clears throat> the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Ubay ibn Ka'ab reports, that after one third of the night had passed, he stood and he spoke to the companions and he said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهِ جَاءَتِ الرَّاجِفَةِ تَتْبَعُهَا الرَّادِفَةِ جَاءَ الْمَوْتُ بِمَا فِيهِ جَاءَ الْمَوْتُ بِمَا فِيهِ He stood and he said to the companions, O oh people, remember Allah. The first blast has come and it will soon be followed by the second blast. Death has come with all that it involves. Death has come with all that it involves. It's truly astonishing then that there are many cultures that avoid remembering death, that avoid talking about death or mentioning it. They consider it bad luck. They consider it a bad omen. It is not, as many of you, a morbid topic that's supposed to cause you depression and despair. No, on the contrary, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Remembering death causes us to live full, healthy, wholesome, happy lives. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ فَإِنَّهُ يُمَحِّسُ الذُّنُوبِ وَيُزَهِّدُ فِي الدُّنْيَا Remember death frequently, for it expiates the sins. Why does it expiate the sins? Because the one who remembers death frequently, he follows that thought, that reflection, with immediate tawbah, with immediate repentance. So his sins are expiated. فَإِنَّهُ يُمَحِّسُ الذُّنُوبَ يُزَهِّدُ فِي الدُّنْيَا And it reduces keen fondness for the world. When you remember death and that you will part with everything, then your attachment to the world is weakened. Your grip loosens. And your attachment to the akhirah becomes stronger and stronger until you long to meet your Lord. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَادِمِ اللَّذَّاتِ فَإِنَّهُ مَا ذَكَرَهُ أَحَدٌ فِي ضِيقِ الْعَيْشِ إِلَّا وَسَّعَهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا فِي سَعَتِهِ وَلَا فِي سَعَةٍ إِلَّا ضَيَّقَهُ عَلَيْهِ Abundantly remember the destroyer of pleasures, meaning death. None will remember it while in hardship, except that it will ease it. And none will remember it while in ease, except that he will feel disturbed during the periods of affluence, of riches, remembering death checks your indulgence in bad practices and your improper use of wealth. It reminds you that you will part with your fortune and you'll never see it again. So it will disturb you and remind you to amass a fortune that will benefit you. And for the one experiencing narrowness in their provision, deep, Narrowness and constriction in their provision and in their rizq, it causes them contentment, peace and happiness and satisfaction with whatever little quantity that they have. Remembering that Allah will hold us accountable for every penny that we spend, they are happy that their account will be swift on the day of judgment as they will have less to answer for. This world, my dear respected brothers and sisters, it only deceives its lovers. It deceives those who love it. Anyone who gives thought to death and the day of resurrection diverts his heart to the next world and is no longer deceived by the hypocrisies of the world, by the pomp and the show. He's no longer allured by them. Ibn Muti'in, rahimahullah, one of the salihin of the past, he looked at his home and how well built it was. And he was and he became pleased with the house. Then he wept. He cried and he said, Wallahi lawla al-mawt, lakuntu bika masrooran. Wallahi, if not for death, by Allah, if not for death, I would have been pleased and happy with you, speaking to the house. 
ولولا ما نصير إليه من ضيق القبور لقرت بالدنيا أعيننا and if not for our fate of a tight and narrow grave then our eyes would be comforted by looking at you the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to prepare for this inevitable my dear respected brothers and sisters he said al kayis man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al mawt the intelligent one is the one who calls himself to account and prepares with work for what will come after death والعاجز من اتبع نفسه والعاجز من اتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله and the <coughs> and the foolish is the one who subdues himself to every desire and seeks from Allah the fulfillment of his vain desires the vain desire being that what well, I'll live a long life of sin and do what I want and then in the end I'll repent I'll do tawbah who guaranteed you that who promised you that where did you get that idea from? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam drew a square in the sand to illustrate an important point <clears throat> to the companions. In that square, he drew a line from one end of the square to the other and the line extended beyond the square into the distance. And in the square, he drew a number of lines, short lines. The line from one end of the square to the other is man's life, as he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the line extending beyond the square into the distance are, is his hopes. His hopes and his dreams, no end in sight to them. And the lines, the short lines in the square are the afflictions that cause death. So man's life is short, but his hopes and dreams are overreaching they go beyond his life but death surrounds him and we need to be aware of this the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam made this incredible illustration to depict to to depict for us the reality of life that we are surrounded by if afflictions as he said if one were to miss him the other would afflict the other would strike him and if one were to strike him the other would miss him. We are surrounded by death, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And that should not scare us. But it should prompt us and jolt us to prepare. To prepare for the inevitable. So let us be reminded by the deaths of others. Let us not continue to pray a janazah prayer after a janazah prayer after a janazah prayer. And hearing that our relative uncle so-and-so died and cousin so-and-so died. And we are unmoved. We are unmoved. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he said, As-sa'eedu man wu'idha bi ghayrih. The felicitous, the one who will truly be happy, is the one who is reminded by others. He doesn't wait until his moment comes. And then he remembers. Death, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is the fate of everything and everyone. It's the reality that cannot be escaped. It is the affliction that cannot be missed. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Say, indeed the death from which you flee, indeed it will meet you. Then you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the witnessed, and he will inform you about what you used to do. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prepare us for our inevitable fate. الحمد لله رب العالمين أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين death my dear respected brothers and sisters is truly a catastrophe it is a calamity as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it. He called it musibatul mawt, the calamity of death. But the calamity that is greater than death is ghafla, is heedlessness, is forgetting the reality that one exists in. Heedlessness of the inevitable, of the unavoidable, and not preparing for it. Never was the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heedless of death, nor were his companions or the tabi'een, the successors of 
the companions and the Salaf al-Salih, the righteous predecessors of our Ummah. They would say, Kafa bil mawti wa'idha. Death suffices as a warning. Death itself was enough of a warning for them. They did not need to fall ill to be reminded of death. They did not need to lose a loved one to be reminded of death. They knew that there was an event that ends this life called death. And they prepared for it. They prepared for it vigorously and energetically. It severed their hearts. It severed their heart connection with this world and, preventing them, and prevented them from indulging in its pleasures. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, he would gather the scholars most evenings in his court to remind him of Allah and of death. And rather than enjoying opulence that his position could have gained him, he would sit with the scholars and weep as though they were in, as though they were at a funeral. And once he said to one of the scholars, Idhni, admonish me, remind me. So he said to him, you are not the first Khalifa to die. So he said, Zidni, increase my admonition. He said, all of your fathers and forefathers until Adam tasted death and soon will be your turn. So Umar, rahimahullah, he wept. And Al-Hasan, radiallahu anhu, he said, I never saw an intelligent man except that death would serve as a warning for him and would cause him sorrow. And Al-Ash'af, rahimahullah, he said, we would enter upon Al-Hasan and the topic of the conversation would frequently be the hellfire, the affairs of the hereafter and death. And Al-Rabi' ibn Khathyam, and this statement is uh, attributed to many of the Salaf who said, if, I, if my heart forgets death for an hour, if I forget death for an hour, then my heart would be corrupted. Such was their eagerness and keenness to remember the inevitable. And Al-Hasan al-Basri, as many of us know very well, had a grave in his home that he had dug. He would lie in every night to remind himself of his own mortality and remind himself of his own death. Then he would rise and he would say, reciting Allah's words, Rabbi Rji'oon, O my Lord, return me. La'alli a'malu salihan fima tarakt, so that I may do righteousness in what I so that I may do righteousness in what I left behind. And he would stand the night in prayer. My dear respected brothers and sisters, let us be moved by death. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, if he was reminded, he was of the a'imma of the tabi'een. He was one of the imams of the tabi'een. When he was reminded of death, his students would not benefit from him for a week. And if they asked him a question, he would answer in a bewildered state, la adri, la adri. I don't know, I don't know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepare us to meet him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts and clean the rust from our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good conclusion to this life upon la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Hada wa sallu wa sallimu ala khayri al-anam fa inna Allah amarakum bi amrin. Bada'a bihi bi nafsihi wa thanna bi malaikati qudusihi thumma bikum ayyuhal mu'minun. Faqala jalla min qail. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وأعن بفضلك كلمتي الحق والدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اللهم اختم لنا بالحسنى اللهم اختم لنا بالحسنى اللهم اختم لنا بالحسنى عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله